Hello, I'm Bryce Dunville and I'm here with Amanda Coburn, the Development Coordinator at Vandenberg Humane Society. How are you doing today? Doing very well, thank you. Um, what started your passion for helping animals? I've been an animal lover my whole life, I've had animals my whole life, and I always wanted to volunteer here, so I did, and then there was a job opening and I took it because I really believe in this organization and the mission and what we're doing to help animals in our community. What kind of training does it take to actually work at the Humane Society? It depends on the department. A lot of times we always require a high school diploma for any department, but depending on whether you're working in the clinic or in the administrative offices, it depends on what you're doing really. We usually require a college degree for any of our senior staff, but that doesn't have to be in a specific topic. We have radio and television majors who work here. We have an accountant who works here. Um, we have a lot of different things. Obviously in the clinic, we have two veterinarians who work here, so they are fully licensed. DVMs have been to vet school. Um, and then a lot of the rest is on the job training. So really, no matter what you want to do in life in terms of a career, we can probably find a place for you here doing that exact thing. What kinds of animals does the Vanity Rain Society take? We take anything domestic, um, obviously dogs, cats, and rabbits, we always have a lot of those, but we'll take small pocket pets, you know, hamsters, gerbils, guinea pigs, that kind of thing. We will take ferrets, we'll take birds and reptiles and things of that nature, and occasionally we'll have um, smaller livestock in here as well, pigs, goats, basically anything that we can house that's domestic that needs a home, we'll take it. So with all these animals, what's the first step to actually getting them adopted? The first step would be for someone to come in and visit with the animals because we want to make sure that they know what they're getting themselves into. We want them to get to know the animals prior to taking them home, just like a vehicle. You wouldn't go and buy a car without test driving it first. So we want to make sure that the animals and the people are getting to know each other. And then the application process begins and that's basically where it all starts and I can show you how that works. Okay, this is our intake lobby. This is where animals come in when they're being surrendered. That means if they're strays, they come back here. Owner surrenders come back here. All incoming animals come through these doors. The purpose for that is so that we keep incoming animals separate from outgoing animals. We don't ever know what's coming in in terms of species, but also disease. It really helps us cut down on the transmission of disease just in case the new animals do have the sneezes or some kind of other illness that we don't know about. Um, and it keeps the atmosphere different. Um, obviously this can be a very sad area with people surrendering their pets, but the adoption area is always a very happy place to be. So we don't like to mix the dynamics of each area together so that's why we have a separate lobby so let's go see what's going on in here yeah. all right this is our triage area this is the area where all of the incoming animals are what we call processed which means they get their testing their vaccinations they get their nails trimmed they get a once over to glance for any kind of obvious signs of illness or temperament or things like that so this is where all of that happens this is kind of the the um, nucleus of our intake department so they're working on restraining her because obviously when we're getting blood drawn and getting vaccines, sometimes it can hurt a little bit and we want to make sure that we keep the staff safe and keep Suko safe. So they're just restraining her, distracting her a little bit by moving her head. They're about to draw blood for a feline leukemia test, which tests for um, not only feline leukemia or feline AIDS, but FIV as well, feline immunodeficiency virus. So what's the majority of animals that you get in? Definitely cats. We see pretty much double the amount of cats as we do dogs or bunnies or anything else. Um, so much of that is spay and neuter. Um, the majority of cats that come back through here typically are unspayed females with their litters of kittens, especially in the spring and summer and even going into fall if it's been warm. Um, so it's absolutely crucial that people not only fix their own pets, but work to help fix strays in the area as well, because that's where so many of these cats and kittens come from. So right now, Suko is getting dewormer. She's getting pyrantal, which helps prevent against internal parasites. Every animal that um, comes in gets one of those. She'll also get an FVRCP vaccine, which um, protects against most common feline illnesses that are contagious, Khaleesi virus, um, panleukopenia, things like that. So every cat gets that before coming in. Once again, the purpose of that is so that every animal that exits this door is vaccinated, which helps us prevent disease against the entire rest of the population of cats. Right now they're combing for fleas to see if we can find any fleas or flea dirt. 
Victoria is filling out a card with Suko's information with her weight, um, confirming that she's had all these services done, her tests and her vaccines and things like that, so that when she moves up for adoption, the adoption staff will have her medical record for her future adopters. So when the animals are processed and they're ready to move up for adoption, they will come up here into our adoption areas. We have cats back here that you saw earlier. We have our cageless cat room. If it's an adult cat that's very friendly and likes other cats, we'll put them in the cageless cat room. We just put them in there uh, somewhere up high where they feel secure and then we um, put a collar on them with their name on them and then we hope for the best and hope that someone adopts them. Um, for the dogs, same kind of thing, they'll go back into one of our kennels, they'll be set up with their bed, food and water and toys and things of that nature and rabbits and other species will go back into our small animal room, we'll set them up with their litter box and their timothy hay and their pellets and things like that and then it's just a matter of hoping and praying that soon somebody comes in and wants to adopt them.